Pro tip 1525. If you're trying to get dialed at longer yardages, make sure you poop before you come to the range. <coughs> I think it definitely has an impact on my shooting ability. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into Michigan Ambush Outdoors for this week's video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the arrow build that I decided to go with for my Western archery elk hunt. So I'm super excited about this trip that I got coming up here in August and September. This is the first time I've ever been on an archery elk hunt and, and this hunt is uh, has been a dream of mine for five years. So I'm super stoked that it's all finally coming together. We're roughly about six weeks out from our departure date. Everything is in place. The only thing I need to do now is, is just basically get a tag. All my time off is approved. And most importantly, I got it approved with my wife. So I'll be gone for roughly about two weeks and then we'll be hunting for about nine days. I'm super stoked about it, but let's get back to the reason for the video. And again, it's the arrow build. Um, and I do want to give you guys uh, a little bit of background. So if you don't want to hear the background of what I shot before to what I'm shooting now for the archery elk hunt, just skip to uh, the point in the video where I start talking about what arrow that I'm running for the elk hunt. I'll put what time it starts in the video. So if you want to skip, just go ahead and skip. But so what I ran before was the Easton five millimeter FMJ. I ran it in a 340 spine and I always ran, I've always ran the entire time that I've ever shot archery is just a, a three three fletch blazer configuration. Uh, with this arrow setup, uh, shooting in, in Michigan and hunting whitetail deer, I only ran a hundred grain broadhead and I ran a hundred grain mechanical. I shot a two blade rage for the longest time, even on my crossbow. Had great success with them, but going out west, I wanted to go back to a fixed blade just because in my opinion, I feel that a fixed blade broadhead is going to give you more shot opportunity. You don't have to wait for that perfect broadside or quartering away shot. Another reason why I switched um, from the Easton FMJs is I wanted to go back to a carbon arrow. Uh, these arrows, they are strong, so it's unlikely that you'll bend them, but there always is that possibility. So I just wanted to remove that variable from my setup completely. If you get a bend, obviously, um, you may not be able to see it, with the naked eye, then you gotta constantly spin your arrows to check to see if they are bent. And like I said, I wanted to completely remove that. Uh, so my my arrow weight uh, with my Easton FMJs came right in at 450 with a 100 grain broadhead and a three fletch blazer configuration. But I wanted to run uh, 125 grain broadhead this year to increase my front of center. With the FMJs, it's very hard to get a high front of center on your arrow just due to the, the spine weight of this arrow. So these arrows are 11.3 grains per inch. This is a 340 spine versus the Easton Axis, which is 10.7 grains per inch, but I'm shooting a 300 spine. Um, the reason that I went with a 300 spine is because, again, I went with 125 grain broadhead. Uh, I spoke to Easton. They recommended either A, decrease the poundage of the bow, which I really didn't want to do, or increase your spine weight. So I increased my spine weight. Uh, increasing uh, front of center for this hunt was is something that I wanted to achieve. I wanted to achieve a higher front of center uh, because I'm going out and I'm hunting bigger animals. The next thing I kind of want to touch base on is you can see uh, the fletching configuration. Um, so this year on this arrow build, again, Easton axis, five millimeter, 300 spine, I went with a four fletch configuration. And the reason that I went with the four fletch is because I wanted a, some additional steering, definitely, definitely at longer distances. If I was only hunting in Michigan, I probably wouldn't be too concerned with going with a four fletch because most of the shots that I'll probably take on a whitetail are is it gonna be anywhere from 25 to 35. So you don't really have to worry about the, the, the drag of the fixed blade broadheads, but shooting longer distances out west, uh, I thought it would be uh, a good opportunity to try four fletch. And I'm running the Q2i Fusions, which is a three inch vein. Uh, these did add a little bit of weight to the back. These are 7.5 grains uh, per vein versus the Blazers, which are six grains uh, per vein. So my overall just 
fletching weight is right around 30 grains. So my total arrow weight with 125 grain broadhead, uh, I'm right around 470, which I think is gonna give me plenty of weight um, to, to shoot an elk with. I know you get either, you're either a speed freak or you're a weight freak. Uh, one, other, uh, one other thing I want to touch base on, if you are considering going with a four fletch versus a three fletch, and I don't know if this is for everybody, but for me, uh, I had to move my fletchings forward quite a bit. So on my previous arrows, my fletchings from knock of center are roughly about an inch. Uh, with this arrow set up, you can see these are the exact same uh, length arrows. You can see that it, it went up quite a bit. <clears throat> and these are actually from Naka Center are about an inch and seven eighths. Uh, so I had to move this forward seven eighths of an inch. And the reason that I had to do that is because when I went with the, the four fletch configuration, I started getting a lot of facial contact on my fletchings and it was causing me to change the way that I was shooting to get consistent. So I brought them back in, I had them refletched. Uh, they actually gave me a bare shaft uh, I drew back on my bow and they they marked where the best spot for me to run these fletchings based on the way that I wear my beard a and then just my draw length and my and my bow set up so they moved them forward and man you wouldn't think that a move like that uh, would change the way or change the consistency I mean to be honest I was a little concerned with how far forward they were but I'm shooting tighter groups now than I've ever shot. So I was super happy with that. So I'll keep this video short, but this is the, the setup that I'm running uh, for my archery elk hunt. And this is the setup that I'm gonna stick with too, even when I come back to hunt here in Michigan. Uh, I'm happy with the weight of this arrow. I'm happy the way that it flies. My bow is sighted into it now. The guys over at Adams Archery in Milan, Michigan uh, have been a great help. They've been extremely patient with me. Uh, if you guys are looking for an archery shop uh, in the Michigan area, in the southeastern Michigan area, definitely check out Adams. Those guys are extremely knowledgeable. They know what they're talking about. And like I said, they've been extremely patient with me. So like I said, this is what I'm running this year. I hope uh, I hope I get a shot on a bull and I can uh, I can come back and I can report to you how the arrow performed and then also just uh, uh, share um, share the, the the hunt with you guys. Um, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you guys are notified next time I put out a video. And we'll see you guys on the next one.